So I'm definitely someone who is obsessed with reading and researching about successful people and trying to understand like what makes them tick and what makes them different. So for today's video, I wanna share with you the seven habits of highly successful people that I have uncovered. <laughs> Hello my charmed ones and welcome back to my channel for another video and if this is your first time with me I would like to say welcome. My name is Alexis, but I'm also known as Miss Trenchcoat all across the internet. I'm an online entrepreneur who designs and sells productivity tools, strategies, and skills to help you manifest success with less stress. So if that sounds interesting to you, I'll leave some links down below in the description box where you can check out more of my work online and feel free to download some of my latest free productivity tools over at The Charmed Shop. Com. Okay, so for my first habit of highly successful people, I'm here taking you into my bathroom. So if you hear a weird noise, it's just the vent fan that I can't turn off. So please forgive that. But we're in my bathroom this morning to talk about the first habit of highly successful people. And that first habit is that they prioritize themselves first in their lives. So you guys may have heard me tell you this before, that it's very important that you prioritize yourself. I won't go into the whole spiel about the airline safety talk. Make sure you secure your own mask before others. Oh, whoops, I just kind of went into it. But it is important to prioritize yourself first. So how does this look like in my life? Like, how do I do this? I do a lot of different things for prioritization of myself and self-care of myself throughout my days. But I would say that currently, like probably one of the most impactful ways that I prioritize myself is in my morning routine. Every morning, or at least every weekday morning, I get up and I do my hair and makeup and make sure I have on like a decently cute outfit, right? So although I work from home, you know, I don't have to get really dressed up. So I like to put on something that looks nice and presentable. And then I like to do my hair and makeup. And so I spend like, you know, 30 minutes in the morning in this setup here, doing my hair, doing my makeup, making sure I look good and feel good. And this goes a really long way for helping me set my day up for success. Because honestly, on the days that I do this, I feel so much more confident and put together. It really is really astounding the difference. So that is the first habit that I wanted to share with you guys and some inspiration for how I make it happen in my life so that you can perhaps use this for yours. Okay, so now we're down in my kitchen and I'm going to make my green juice smoothie and I'm going to tell you about the second habit of highly successful people. So that second habit is that highly successful people feed themselves a continuous stream of inspiration and motivation. And I don't mean feed in like the fact that I'm doing a green juice right now or like actually anything like nutritional, although I'm sure that has something to do with their success as well. What I'm talking about is inspiration and motivation for their mind. They're always feeding their mind. And so one way that I like to do this is in the morning after I'm done getting ready, as you guys saw a moment ago in my bathroom, I will pop on my earbuds and I will turn on some sort of inspirational content on my iPhone. So for me, that could be like an inspirational podcast or Something I'm really into very often is I like to look on YouTube and you can search like Abraham Hicks if you're like a fan of Law of Attraction like I am. And you'll get a whole bunch of different audios of basically like live sessions that Esther Hicks and Abraham are doing in front of an audience. So I like to listen to things like that in the morning and it really gets me like revved up and inspired and motivated for my day. And that's definitely something that, that people who are highly successful, like you absolutely have to be consistently motivating yourself. So I find that one of the easiest ways to do that is through like audio recordings, podcasts, you can watch YouTube videos, whatever it is, you can do that while you're kind of doing sort of the mundane tasks of everyday life, like me putting together my green juice right now. Okay, so while we're here in the kitchen, I thought this would be the appropriate place to talk to you about habit number three of highly successful people, which is that they systematize the mundane areas of their life. So I think everybody has sort of like mundane tasks or things that they don't like to do that they are pretty much required to do as like a human being. So for me, those things would be like paying bills and doing like financial things and maybe like meal prepping and like actually cooking meals, even though don't get me wrong, I do like to cook. I 
like to cook when I feel inspired to cook, which is not every single day, like three meals a day. And then the final area that I struggle with is cleaning my house, which you guys have seen, I do have some like special gadgets that make that a little bit more fun and a little bit more interesting and much quicker, of course. So today I thought I would show you how I actually do my meal planning and, you know, get ready to meal prep using my planner. Okay, so as you can see here, we are looking inside my Charmed Life Master Planner that is my planner for the year. And although I do sell like meal planning inserts in my shop for anyone who has like a ring bound planner that they've put together, um, obviously I don't have that luxury with the master planner. So what I do is inside of my notes section, I actually just create like almost like a replica of some of those inserts. So I have on the left side a meal list. So I just dedicate one page to all of the meals that I'm like currently interested in cooking and eating, keeping those in a list. And then I've got like these little check boxes created so I can mark off if it's like something you'd eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner, or a snack. So I've got that list on the left and then the dedicated space on the right is for the actual meal plan. So I don't normally need like a Monday through Sunday breakfast, lunch, and dinner breakdown for my personal meals. Um, so what I normally will do is just like on a sticky note, go ahead and list out like what my options are that I have prepped for the week. Another way that you could do this, if you can see underneath, is I've kind of just created like a mock week where you could literally just put in like the dates and the days of the week, just on like a very big sticky note. But normally I don't need to go that in detail. But these are the meals that I actually have like prepped or have on hand to make quickly. So let's go ahead and take a look inside the fridge and I'll show you some of these options that I've got. So welcome to my very disorganized fridge. But as you can see up here, I've got these mason jars with different sorts of chia seed puddings put together and prepped. Now I normally make them so that one is full right now. Um, so that it's basically like a cup. So it's like, it could be one serving. You literally could have like a cup of this as a serving, but I generally have it like, have it two, and I make different flavors. So this one is regular cinnamon. That one is matcha. And that one that's half empty is chocolate, which I really don't like the chocolate. I don't think I'm going to make that one again. Down here, I have a big batch of soup that I made for the week. This was broccoli and rutabaga with some like Arabic spices. And then down here, I have my spinach and bacon quiche, which you guys have seen me make this in a meal prep video. So that is how I systematize my meal planning. And then you guys know already probably that usually on Sundays I do my meal prep and just prepare everything I need for the week so that I really don't have to think about meals because it can be a very time consuming activity. And that means that I have more time and energy and mental energy to think about other things that are more important. Okay, so habit number four of highly successful people is that they are continuous learners. Now, you guys know that I also love being a continuous learner. I think that after school and college or whatever higher education you get ends, that you should not end your education. And so the way that I like to execute on this is that I like to read. In fact, in 2018, I tallied it up. I read 42 books. That's an incredible amount of books. I don't think other than when I was in high school or college that I ever read that many books. Um, and I really didn't read all the physical copies of these books. Many of these books were read on Audible because Audible is a very amazing resource. I've talked about it before. This video is definitely not sponsored by them, but feel free to hit me up, Audible, because I love your service. But it is an amazing way to help you continue your education. And especially when you're doing things like going on errands and you're in the car, popping on an audiobook, you know, connecting it to your car, however that technology works now for you. I just plug my phone into a cord and all of a sudden an audiobook starts playing through my car. So I would highly recommend if you're someone who is interested in continuing your education and keeping your mind like nimble to definitely think about investing in a service like Audible or just, you know, get a library card and go down to your local library and you can get books or you can get audiobooks and listen to whatever topics that are interesting to you. I happen to read a lot of nonfiction and I do a lot of reading in terms of productivity and quantum mechanics and things like that. But 
you do you. Like you read whatever is of interest to you and it will do so much for your mind and helping you to become more successful in your life, whatever your career path is. Now, the fifth habit of highly successful people is that they curate their inner circle. So what I mean by this is that they keep the people that are closest to them, that have the biggest effect on them, to a very specific curated group of people who are supportive and loving and inspiring. If you're familiar with the concept that you are an amalgamation of the five people that you spend the most time with, then you'll understand how the people that you spend the most time with end up having the biggest impact on your mental state, your capacity, how you're feeling, your energy, because we literally siphon energy between people, right? So that doesn't have to be a negative thing, right? Like we are always transferring energy whenever we spend time and energy on people. So we want the people that we spend our time with to be people who are worthy and are uplifting. So one of the ways that I actually execute this is that I make sure to spend time with my other girlfriends who are my business besties, um, as well as my other friends. But I do find that personally having like a group of like mastermind sisters to be able to bounce ideas off of for my business and who really have similar priorities to me in terms of the fact that they might be running home-based businesses or having like a side hustle that they want to turn into like a full-time one day. Um, I really think that that is a great motivation and inspiration to help keep your mind in the right place and to help keep you perpetually successful. So in order to spread the love and give you guys a little bit of a boost, especially if you're someone who, like me, maybe has a business or a side hustle or does something online, a brand that they're trying to promote, I've asked a few of my friends within the online business community to create a little video clip and share a little bit of inspiration, some words of wisdom for you as you move into the year. So I hope you find these next pieces of advice and insight very inspiring. Hi, my name is Erica and I'm the creator of The Jewel Box and my 2019 advice for you is to keep moving forward. Hey, I'm Eviana and you can find me at evianabynum.com and today I want to share my top tip for 2019. So this year my number one focus and I hope that it is for you is to create everything from a place of peace. You see every time in the past when I've created things from a place of feast or famine I've completely failed and I'm sure you can resonate with that. So when we create from a place of scarcity we don't do our best and we're stressed out as we make it and it's usually not as successful as we want. Want it to be but when we create things from a place of peace there's more flow we're coming from our best self and we're doing things with a better attitude and it feels good the whole way through so this year as you work on your projects and you plan your projects keep on keep things as simple as you can and think about what comes easy to you and what's gonna flow well for you and I guarantee you will have your best year yet what's going on everybody so my number one tip for this 2019 19 is to have better reflection. It's pretty hard to tell where you're going if you don't look at where you came from. So I look back at my habits, my goals, what worked, what didn't work, and I adjust from there. Sometimes we may not even get to all the goals that we had the previous year, so it's about maybe reanalyzing them and attacking them from a new angle. So just to recap, it is to reflect on the past year, analyze it, get rid of what's unnecessary, and attack it with a new angle. Hi, I'm Julie Harris-Walker of the Other 50% Podcast Network. If I had one piece of advice for you to have a great 2019, it would be this. Stop waiting for permission and be as brave as you can be. I heard a wonderful phrase recently. It was, she who is brave is free. So let's all be our bravest self in 2019. Now, the sixth habit of highly successful people is that they say no more than they say yes, so that their yes really means something. So for me, this is a big one as well, because I feel like I've definitely been someone who's tried to be very intentional as to where I put my time and energy. And so for me, this means that a lot of times when I get different business offers or sponsorships or people who want to like work with me online with my business and my brand, I end up saying no a vast majority of the time. And now for some people, I realize that may seem odd. Like why would you be turning down like good opportunities and different partnerships, even with like some very legit brands. And the reason is for me is that I really feel like 
I'm not always able to give my 110%. And if I keep saying yes to things, I know it's just going to overwhelm my plate so that things are going to end up falling below par for me. I am by no means a perfectionist, but when I do say yes to, you know, working with someone or engaging in some sort of activity, I want to put my all into it. That's one of the things that I really do believe has set me apart, not just in online business, but really in my life is that when I commit to doing something, I do it like 110% and I fully show up. So if you're someone who has a problem like I have in the past being a people pleaser and perhaps saying yes too much to different people, giving your energy out to too many people, and then finding that you aren't getting back your return in terms of energy and inspiration and motivation, and you're really just being overwhelmed and like sucked dry by giving all your time to other people, I would highly recommend that you take a moment to like reevaluate your priorities and to actually say, you know what, I'm gonna start saying no to things um, more often so that when I say yes, it means that I'm totally fully engaged in whatever I've committed to. And the seventh and final habit of highly successful people that I'm going to share with you today is that they don't accept roadblocks or failure as the last word on the subject. Successful people understand that the world is a complicated place and it won't always give you like a thumbs up or like pat on the back or support for like going after the things that you want to achieve in your life. But you have to keep doing it anyway. Resistance is something that everyone faces on their path to success. It could be little roadblocks that stand in your way or like big epic failures. But that resistance and those failures do not actually mean that you cannot actually achieve your end goal. In fact, resistance, I really believe, is put in our way in order to help test our resolve to see how committed we really are to making some big crazy dream a reality. Think about it. Could you really imagine how boring the world and life would be if everything you wanted came to you like completely effortlessly and that literally you think of something right now and you had it, right? How boring would life get eventually? I know in the, you know, in the short term right now, it'd be really cool to have like everything we want and achieve like all the success we want right now. But really it would get boring after a while and it would really take all of the meaning out of life. But successful people understand that that resistance is just there to be a test. It's just there to be a measure to make sure you really want what you're going after because they know that with time and with energy and planning, they will be able to get to their destination as long as they don't give up. And for me personally, I can't say that I've ever had any epic failures in my life. You know, this is still something that is a bridge that I feel like I might need to cross before I reach whatever pinnacle of success I feel like I want to head towards. But I will say that whenever I do face resistance or roadblocks on my path, which I do very frequently in my day-to-day -day life running my business, I don't let it define for me what I'm capable of doing. I just look at it for what it is. It is a problem, usually someone else's problem, not necessarily my problem, right? Because usually roadblocks and resistance come from interacting with the outside world, but that doesn't mean that I can't solve the problem. It's just something I have to figure out in order to move you know, pass this resistance so I can make my dream a reality. So I sincerely hope that you found today's video to be inspiring and motivating for you learning these seven habits of highly successful people. Of course, I want to hear down in the comments from you and I want to know which one of these habits are you going to focus on first? I don't think by any means we should look at this list and go, I'm going to tackle all seven of these right now. Um, I do think that it's important to be intentional and just pick a few and just start with one area area that you know that you struggle with. So I'd love to know what that area is. If you leave me a comment down below, I definitely read all of the comments. So, you know, if I see that there is one habit specifically that's sticking out, I may, you know, come back to this video and do some more additional content to be helpful to those of you who are struggling with, you know, one or two of these specific issues. Make sure to take a peek into the description box of this video because I will leave you some helpful resources that I think could help you with some of these habits. If you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. And I challenge you right now to think of someone who would really use this information to really help their life. So I want you to think of somebody that really needs this video. I want you to take the URL of this video and I want you to send them a text or an email, send them a message right now with this video to share it because I do think there's a lot of great inspiration and information in this video and you don't know whose life you could literally change just by sharing today's video. 
If you want more of the behind the scenes of my productivity life and business, make sure to follow me over on Instagram at Miss Trenchcoat. And of course, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button for more awesome videos by me. And until next time, bye bye